Yes, Grandma, I did get your special recipe chili in the mail. In fact, I'm about to eat it now. Yes, Grandma, I did get your super spicy hot sauce. Oh, only use one drop? <laughs> wow, this stuff must be really hot. Don't worry, though. I'll be very careful. Love you too, Grandma. Okay, bye-bye. Oh, I forgot my bow tie. <laughs> How weird. Look at me all Timmy no ties. How embarrassing. Well, guess I better go get it. Oh, sweet. Timmy made me a bowl of chili. It looks delicious. Hey, Camille, are you ready to... Hey, that's my chili! Ah! <laughs> it's a good thing I brought an extra set of clothes today. The other ones are burnt to a crisp. Timmy, bow ties. What did you put in my chili? Your chili? That was my chili. And I only put one tiny drop of hot sauce. Uh, correction. <laughs> it looks like I put a whole bunch of hot sauce in it. Timmy, my mouth feels like it's on fire. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, here. Drink this water. It should help cool things off. Ah, that's a little better. Thanks, Timmy. I probably shouldn't have assumed that that chili was for me in the first place. Yeah, and I should have been more careful with that hot sauce. Seriously, what is that stuff? Um, it's my grandma's special hot sauce. She calls it Isaiah's burning coal hot sauce. Sauce so hot, it'll burn the sin out of ya. What? That's a weird name for a hot sauce. How'd she come up with that? I don't know. Probably from today's Bible story. Oh, you mean the story about the angel that appears to Isaiah. Yeah. You see, long ago, Israel had some bad kings who led them away from following God. That's right. But there was one man named Isaiah who loved God with his whole heart and stayed faithful to him. He did. And one day, God came to Isaiah with a message. Hey, you know what? I think we should read about it straight from the Bible. So let's do this. In just a second, press pause on the video and read the verse on the screen. While you're reading, it's helpful to know that a seraph, or the plural seraphim, is a type of angel. When you're finished, press play and we'll see you back here. Isn't that so cool? An angel of God with six wings touched Isaiah's mouth with a hot coal. Can you imagine how hot that must have been? Um, yeah, I can imagine. Oh, yeah. Isaiah's burning coal hot sauce. Sauce, sauce so, so hot, hot it'll, it'll burn, burn the, the sin, sin out, out of you. Yeah, touching Isaiah's mouth with a burning coal was God's way of purifying or taking away the sinful things that Isaiah had said in the past. And after that, he became one of God's prophets. Wait a second. A prophet? What exactly is that? Great question. So, think about this. Have you ever been on a road trip? Sure, lots of times. Me too. Road trips can be a ton of fun, if you know where you're going. But how would you feel if you got lost? Well, I guess I'd feel kind of scared, maybe even a little bit frustrated. Yeah, and I think that's probably how the people of Israel felt too. 
It's kind of like they were on a road trip towards God, but the evil kings gave them bad directions and they got lost. So God sent prophets like Isaiah to help them. The prophets were like road signs that steered Israel in the right direction. Hey, you know what? That gives me an idea for a challenge. I've printed out some pictures of road signs on these pieces of paper. In just a second, I'll hold them up one at a time. <gasps> My challenge! You burnt it to a crisp! Sorry, I guess the hot sauce hasn't worn off yet. You know what though? That's okay. I have another idea for a challenge. Let's go outside and I'll tell you what it is. Okay, here's how this is gonna work. Timmy and I are going to race these tricycles towards the end of this court. If we see a stop sign, that means we have to stop immediately. And if we see a U-turn sign, that means we have to turn around and head the other way. The first one to reach the grass is the winner. Timmy Bowties, are you ready? Oh, <laughs> let's do it. All right, racers, start your engines. <laughs> Okay, ready, set, go! That challenge was so fun. Right, Camille? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Okay, fine. I guess it was a little fun. But more than that, it kind of shows us what the prophets like Isaiah had to do. What do you mean? How so? Well, like I said before, the prophets were kind of like the road signs in our challenge. The Israelites were driving straight towards sin. They were worshiping idols and living in a way that dishonored God. So God sent the prophets to say, stop and turn around. You see, God used the prophets to steer his people away from sin and back to him. Oh yeah, that's so cool. But. I thought the prophets were the ones who told about what God was going to do in the future. Yeah, you're right. The prophets were also like these signs. They say, road work ahead and reduce speed ahead. Signs like these tell drivers about things that are coming up that they can't see yet. Not only did the prophets help steer God's people in the right direction, they prophesied or told about things that were going to happen in the future. Things that the Israelites couldn't even see yet. Hey, that kind of reminds me of today's Bible verse. It's one of Isaiah's prophecies. It says, we all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the sins of us all. Isaiah 53, 6. Oh, I love that verse. But here's my question for you. Who do you think Isaiah was talking about in this verse? Who did God lay all our sins on? That's easy. It's Jesus. Hundreds of years before Jesus was even born, Isaiah told the people of Israel that the Savior was ahead. 
That's right. The prophets were like road signs telling the world that Jesus was coming and that he was going to die for our sins. You know, that makes me think of another question. What's with all the decorations? What in the world does any of this have to do with Christmas? That's a great question. Maybe the kids know the answer. What do you think Isaiah's prophecy about the coming Savior has to do with Christmas? Press pause and discuss. Hey everybody, welcome back. On the first ever Christmas, Isaiah's prophecy came true. Jesus, the Savior of the world, was born. It's true. And just like Isaiah said, God put all of our sins on Jesus. When Jesus died on the cross, he took the punishment for us so we could be free from sin and live with him forever in heaven. Christmas time is filled with tons of really cool things. The decorations, the food, the presents, but the gift of Jesus is by far the coolest of them all. You're right. In fact, Jesus is the greatest gift of all time. And Christmas is our chance to remember and celebrate his birth. So true. But just to make sure, is it still okay to give gifts on Christmas? Of course! That can even help us remember that Jesus is God's greatest gift to us. Okay, good. Because I already got you a little something. <gasps> you did? Yeah. It's something I got from my grandma. Wait. It's not a bottle of Isaiah's burning coal hot sauce, is it? How did you know? Did you peek? Timmy, no! I love your grandma, but I don't ever want to see that hot sauce again. Oh, great. My grandma's return department is a hot mess. <laughs> so is her sauce. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We love hanging out with you. Yeah, we'll see you again next week. Until then, God bless and goodbye. Bye, everybody. Ah, nice! This looks delicious! I'm definitely stealing this chili!